Howdy everyone! My name is Laura and I'm the host of SVP Kids Online Church where we like to sing and pray and have fun while we hear God's Word and we learn about how awesome it is to live a life following Jesus. I am so glad that you are here with me today and if you're here that means you're a friend whether you're a little kid, a big kid, or a kid at heart. And since we're all friends here, we should know each other's names. So why don't you go ahead and tell me your name right now? <laughs> Yeehaw! We all have some great names. And I am sure we are going to have our rootin' tootin' good time. So to help us get started doing that today, I have a question to get you in the cowpoke mood. Before you head out west on the trail, who would you rather show you the ropes? Would you rather a rodeo star show you the ropes or a traveling ranger? I'm asking this question because we're in a series called Way Out West, where we're heading out on the range while we learn all about God's love for us, while we discover that God has a special purpose for each one of our lives. So welcome back to another fun week of our wild Way Out West journey. I think it would be super to have advice from either a rodeo star or a traveling ranger if we were heading out on the trail. But most of us won't be camping in the desert anytime soon, but we all need God to lead us and show us what to do. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. So let's not dilly dally, let's giddy up on our horses and get ready to travel way out west to check in with our favorite westerners. <laughs> Everyone check this out with me. Last week on Way Out West. After stopping in Whistle Creek to rest up, Dusty and Dallas discovered that the bandit is hot on their tails and trying to sabotage their trip way out west. Determined to save the town folks in Rowdy Town by finding a better town for them to live in, they've been out on the trail the last couple of days to make it to their next stop in Dead Man's Fork. They think they can derail my father's plans? Well, I'm gonna send them on a wild goose chase, only to make sure I trap them in Silver City. <laughs> this is the last time they'll ever mess with the Rowdy Clan. There ain't no use in complaining to me about it. I told you not to eat those leftover beans, didn't I? Well, oh, I'll just be glad when we... Uh, hey, Dusty. Is this what you were expecting Dead Man's Fork to look like? Well, hmm, it does seem a little dead around here. <laughs> Whoever named this place got it spot on. <laughs> okay, well, let's go fetch us some water real quick, and then we can go figure out if there's any life left in this here town. Okay. Gotta be somebody that lives around here, right? Oh, I'm not so sure. Well, let's. Woo, doggy! Look at this! Oh, Silver City. Oh, this place looks real nice. You ever heard of this place before? Well, I ain't heard a word about it, but I do think I remember seeing it on the map. Here. Look, it's right there, just a few miles north of here. Well, what? Did everyone here just pack up and go to Silver City? This flyer says anybody could get richer than a railroad tycoon in less than 30 days. Woo! Well, surely not. Maybe they're all at a town meeting or something. Okay, well, now you go that way and see what you find, and I'll go this way. Oh, Whoa, whoa, hold your horses there. You want to split up in a potential ghost town? Dallas, ghost ain't real. 
You're kidding me, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I just, I didn't want you to be scared is all. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's real nice of you to well. think of me. <laughs> well, let's go see what we can find and meet back here in a few minutes, all right? All right. Come on, Dallas. Things are posted all over the place. People must have gone to Silver City in search of a better life. Wait a minute. Maybe we should scrap this whole tumbleweed canyon idea and just run on up to Silver City. I gotta find Dusty and tell him. Here A ghost or something. Well, I, I guess I did kind of set myself up for it. <laughs> well, there you go. I knew you had a sense of humor in there somewhere. There ain't no ghost around here. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, ghosts or no ghosts, we have stumbled upon a ghost town for sure. Well, I sure didn't see anybody. You just might be right about that. I think they all packed up and went to Silver City. See, I, I was kind of thinking, there's a town that could offer a better life just a few miles up the trail. Do you think we should go there instead of going all the way to Tumbleweed Canyon? I don't want us to get off course. We need to stick with the plan and head to Tumbleweed Canyon. But Dusty, I'm tired. I'm tired of trudging through the desert terrain with the sun beating down on my face all day. I'm tired of eating beans for every single meal and having to sleep in the dirt. <laughs> Think about it. We could go to Silver City and see if these flyers are true. I think we should at least consider it. Hey, I like beans. Did you hear that? Well, howdy there. Name's John Cassidy. The folks around these parts call me Boots. And this here's my cousin, Juddy. Hi there. Name's Juddy. Uh, people call me Juddy. You must be new to the area, huh? We sure get a lot of folks passing through here these days. That's right. Everybody's just out looking for a better life. But we got to warn you. There's a lot of people thinking there's a so-called town named Silver City. If that's where you're headed, listen up. Do not go there. Just go to Tumblewind Canyon instead. It's a land flown with gold that's just up for the taking. Yep. That's why I got this here genuine gold too. After one of my horses, Tina, got scared and kicked the real one, boo, right out my mouth. Too bad you ones weren't here earlier for the rodeo. Jetty here won the whole thing. I ain't a bit surprised neither. Thank you, Boots. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? I got an idea. Town's having a big celebration. You, you two should come. We Cassie sure know how to throw a party, too. There's going to be food, games, and prizes. Hope to see y'all folks there. Bye. I hate that we missed that rodeo. Sounds like I could learn a thing or two from that Cassidy clan. Are you completely off your rocker? Not that I know of. What if the bandit that Mayor Rowdy hired to stop us has paid him off to trick us? That is the most far-fetched thing I ever heard of. We ain't got no reason not to trust him, and I think we should go to that rodeo party. Well, I can tell you right now, I ain't going. So what you gonna do while I go to the party? Who knows? Maybe I'll go do some investigating on the Cassidy clan. You know, see what the folks around here have to say about them. That sure seems like a big old waste of time, if you ask me. Seeing as though there ain't nobody else around. But uh, I know there ain't nothing I can do to stop you, so I'll just see you later. Well, I guess so. I ain't trusting those Cassidys, and I'm gonna prove it. I sure hope Dusty and Dallas listen to Boots and Juddy and keep planning to head to Tumbleweed Canyon. 
That sneaky bandit is up to no good in Silver City, and they need to steer clear. Before we find out what happens next with Dusty and Dallas, get on your feet and sing along with one of our favorite Western songs. Hey there, how do you do? We're headed out west, but we're waiting on you. Pick up your boots and join the fun. Just follow along, watch how it's done. We're headed out west and we're all in this together. Get it up, partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds of a feather. Come on, get up, it's time to go. Yo and howdy high, saddle up, it's time to ride. Get on your feet, lickety split, stomp your boots and just don't quit. We're headed out west and we're all in this together. Get it up, partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds of a feather. So round and round, come on, partner, let's get down. Nowhere else we'd rather be. Come on and holler, repeat after me. Yee haw, yee haw, yee haw, yee haw, yee haw, yee haw. We're headed out west and we're all in this together. Get it up, partner, it's time to go. We're headed out west like birds. me what to do. Let's play What's Missing. We've rounded up some things you'll find way out west. You'll have a few seconds to look at them before they disappear. Then they'll all come back except one. If you know which one's missing, shout it out. What's missing? What's missing? You got it! What's missing? Way to go! Now get on your feet, it's time to sing! We know it all thinks God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know it all thinks God works for the good of those who love Him. When I'm having a bad day, things aren't going my way. I know that God is with me, He's still there, never leave. We know, we know it all thinks God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know it all thinks God works for the good of those who love Him. I know that I can love you because you show me the way. Nothing can separate me from your love. 
you are for us. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. You work for our good. You work for our good. You work for our good because you love us. You love us. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. We know, we know in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him. man's fork sure is getting kind of boring. I sure wish Dusty'd come back from that silly party. Dallas! <laughs> there you are! I have been looking absolutely everywhere for you. <laughs> oh, hey there! Uh, back so soon! <laughs> Did you figure out those Cassidy's are bad eggs yet? Sure didn't. They're some of the most fun cowpokes I ever encountered. And get this, they're even friends with some of my old pals. Well, well that's great and all, but I still don't get a good feeling about them. Well, why not? Did you talk to any folks around here that would make you think they're up to no good? Oh, I did talk to a few folks. But all of them said that the Cassidy's are upstanding people. I bet that bandit has brainwashed this whole town into tricking you and me. Ooh, we gotta get out of here and not listen to a thing any of them are telling us. Now, will you please just go up to Silver City with me and find out if these flyers are real? Well, Boots said not to go to Silver City, and I trust him. Well, not me. I'm sticking to my guns on this one. Suit yourself, then. I just wish you weren't missing out on all the fun. But... I guess I'll catch up with you. I'm heading back to the party. <laughs> uh, I gotta do something. If the people of this town won't tell me the truth, I'll prove it once and for all. My traveling skills have been improving. If I leave now, I'll probably make it back before dark. Then I can prove it to Dusty that Silver City is so much better than that Tumbleweed Canyon. I'm gonna leave Dusty a note so he doesn't wonder where I am. Dusty, gone to Silver City. Which is the right choice? Signed, Dal. Sheriff Dallas. Okay. Off to Silver City. Dallas! 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 I came to get you because Boots and Juddy have something real important to tell... Gone to Silver City, which is the right choice. That is not the right choice. Sign, Dallas. Sheriff Dallas. Oh, no, no, no. Boots and Juddy kept talking about how going to Silver City is a really bad idea. There you are, Dusty. You ran off from the party before we could tell you about that story from the Bible we think you just gotta hear. Wait a minute, now which story were we gonna tell him again? You know, the one about that good old boy named Jethro and how God used him to show Moses what to do when he didn't know. Dusty, this right here is a real good story. All right, saddle up for this here story from the Bible. You can find it in one of the Old Testament books called Exodus. It's all about how God's people made an exit from a land where they had been treated real bad. Whoa, doggy! gotta get out of Dodge. Well, it went something like that. 
Except for they got out of Egypt, and Moses didn't need no lasso. Oh, got it. He mostly just needed for God to show him what to do. One day, Moses was camping near the mountain of God when his father-in-law, Jethro, showed up with Moses' wife and his two sons. Do you think Moses was happy to see him? Well, I reckon they were his kinfolk. Moses was so happy to see him, he gave him a big old... Gold tooth? Like this one? This one's real pretty, ain't it? Well, I guess your tooth is fine, but no. Moses bowed down and gave him a kiss. Oh, like this. Ah. Jethro and Moses caught up on their family. How's your mom and them? Their health. You got something for this rattle in my head? And Moses was able to tell Jethro all about amazing things God had done for them. It made Jethro happier than a bullfrog singing Home on the Range. Oh, I, I know that song. Here. Home, home on the range, where the Israelites now roam free. Well, I'm not sure that's exactly what Jethro sang, but he was happy to hear all about what God had done for him. Now you'd think that everything was starting to get a lot easier for old Moses now that they had got out of Egypt. Whoa! But the people were having some problems. Ugh. Ah. Uh. Well, like any posse out on the range, there were selfish attitudes and fights between the people. <laughs> Moses didn't just want to say who was right or wrong, but he wanted the people to understand what God had said about the whole matter. God said, you get you gotta share your beans. Well, okay, I'll share them here. Oh, thank you. Jethro noticed that Moses was getting real worn out. There were so many people with so many problems just waiting around for old Moses. Woo! That'd be bad. Think about having your boots on with the hot sun. I don't think they had boots, but it doesn't matter. Jethro knew he had to help Moses by giving him some advice. How about this advice? Moses, eat your vegetables. That's good, but that's not what he said. He told Moses to get some help from some friends. Boots, you're my friend. You're my friend too, Juddy. <laughs> All Moses' friends would help him by listening to some of the people and their problems. His friends were able to handle most of them, but they brought the big ones to Moses. Now, that is a golden idea right there. With the help of Jethro's advice, God showed Moses what to do with all those people's problems. Oh boy, well, a jump into Jehoshaphat. You were right. That right there was a good story. Yep, yeah, I'm glad God can show us what to do way out west. Hey guys, we gotta skid along, did along, and get on out of here, head back to the ranch. Yes, sir. There's talk at the party that some sneaky bandit showed up in town and put those fake flyers out. Now, what in tarnations would make somebody do that? Oh, you're kidding me, Boots. A bandit showed up at our party and put flyers up? Mm-hmm. Made me mess my hat up, too. We best be getting back, but I'm sure we'll see you around. A bandit put the flyers out? Oh, it had to be the one working for Mayor Rowdy. What if he was trying to lure us to Silver City to lock us up in jail or something? Oh, this is not good. I've got to find Dallas and tell her that story about the time Moses listened to Jethro's advice. Maybe she'll finally listen to Boots and Juddy when she hears it. Oh, I'm coming for you, Dallas. Woo! Chewy, Dusty really needs to catch up to Dallas before she runs into that sneaky bandit. I hope Dusty can catch up to her on the trail before it's too late. I sure am thankful Boots and Juddy reminded Dusty about the story of Moses and Jethro that helped him see that God shows us what to do. God shows me what to do. For today's Rootin' Tootin' Review, we'll pan for gold to see if we can remember something we learned today. After hearing today's question, we'll start panning. When you see gold letters, call them out. See if you can guess the answer before they all unscramble. Who did Moses listen to in today's Bible story? Jethro. Jethro helped Moses see that he was trying to do too many things on his own. Listening to Jethro's advice made things a lot better for Moses. Listening to the advice of people we respect and trust is one way God shows us what to do. 
Seeing all the shenanigans happening out in the Wild West was a whole lot of fun. Before y'all mosey on back to where you came from, let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray together. Hey God, thank you for giving us people in our lives who love you and can help us see the things you want us to do. Please help us listen and do what you say. We love you. Amen. Well, there just never is a dull moment out in the Wild West, is there? I sure hope that Dusty can stop Dallas before she makes it to Silver City and gets captured by the bandit. Dallas made a bad decision to go to Silver City because she didn't listen to Boots' advice. In that Bible story that Boots and Jetty told, we saw that God can show us what to do by listening to the advice of people who love and follow him. Whose advice did Moses listen to in the Bible story today? Do you remember whose advice it was? If you said Jethro, you are right. Jethro helped Moses see that he was trying to do too many things on his own. Listening to Jethro's advice made things a lot better for Moses. Listening to the advice of people that we respect and trust is one of the ways that God shows us what to do. And that is exactly what we need to know today. God shows me what to do. Our Bible verse helps us remember that God has a purpose for our lives and he'll help us live that out. So why don't we say the verse now? Repeat after me. Romans 8, 28. We know that God is always at work for the good of everyone who loves him. They are the ones God has chosen for his purpose. Romans 8, 28. Great job. Hey, why don't you repeat after me one more time, but I'm gonna do the first half of the verse and then you repeat it, and then the second half of the verse, and then you repeat it, okay? No words this time. There we go. Let's try it. Romans 8, 28. We know that God is always at work for the good of everyone who loves him. That's a long part. Do you think you can do it? Here, I'll do the actions with you. Good job, let's do the second part. They are the ones God has chosen for his purpose. Romans 8, 28. I think you get it. I'll do the actions, you say the words, here we go. Well, hot diggity dog, you did it. Before we go today, let's pray together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hey God, thank you for always wanting to help us no matter what is going on in our lives. Thank you for giving us the Bible, prayer, and others to show us what to do. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I had the best time hanging out with all of you today, but did you know that there is even more fun to be had? Check out our newsletter that we send out every week to your grown-ups to help your whole family get into the rootin' tootin' good times. This newsletter is called the SBP Kids Scoop and your parents can sign up for it by going to stbenedict.ca slash sbpkids and subscribing there. In that email, you'll also find the link to our other SBP Kids video that we put out every week. That's right, we now have two videos each week, one for elementary kids and one for preschoolers. You can find both videos and all the other videos that we have from this series on our YouTube page at youtube.com slash SBP. That is hours of SBP Kids fun waiting for you. All right, friends, today has been so much fun and I can't wait to see you back here out on the range with me to find out what's going to happen next on our trip way out west together. I'll see you then. Bye!